All right, so welcome everybody. Um, this is our teaching and learning call for September 1st, uh, 2021. And um, we've got a small group today, but hopefully um, some folks will watch it on YouTube or something afterward. And if you're interested in, in roadmap stuff, which is what we'll be talking about today. Um, but first, just a few quick announcements. Um, SakaiCon, our virtual conference, will be happening again this year in November. Um, the date for that is going to be Wednesday, November 10th. So um, more details on that coming soon. Uh, the call for proposals isn't quite open yet, but we hope to have that open within, you know, by ne sometime next week, maybe. Um, so uh, mark your calendars and hopefully you guys can be there. And we will be including, um, as part of the conference, some of the first results of the open source health factors study. So if you've uh, seen other presentations on this, um, you can get an update on the latest. And there's also a link in the um, agenda, which the agenda link is in the Etherpad. Um, if you'd like to go there and uh, read about what's been happening with the open source health factors. So um, does anybody else have any other announcements? So I am going to actually turn over screen share here and everything to Josh. He's going to be giving us our roadmap update for Sakai 22. All right. Thanks. So this will be pretty informal, um, but I thought it would be fun to begin to talk about the roadmap items that have made it into or will very shortly make it into Sakai 22 with the the feature freeze date approaching. So as as far as I can tell the uh, the from the core call yesterday, the there are a few uh, new features that people want to get into Sakai 22. So we're allowing a little bit more time for that. So the, the branch cutting is being delayed a little bit toward the end of September. So one of the things that Earl tells me is that uh, there are many, many more PRs this year than there have been in any recent years. So that's actually really great news. There's uh, stuff being contributed by uh, Western University in Canada. There is stuff being contributed by the University of Dayton, several different improvements to lessons and other kinds of things. Um, and there are also some some other some other improvements as well. So that's that's, that's pretty exciting. So let me uh, let me dive in and uh, give you guys a sense of where we're at. So I'm going to turn on screen sharing. It's turning on. All right, there we go. Um, is it? Is everyone else seeing these? Okay, now I am. All right, great. It took a minute to load, but it's there now. So it's always used. It's always useful to talk for a few minutes about why we go through this roadmap exercise. You know, I think we've been telling this why roadmap story for a few years and internalizing it a bit. So it it doesn't require quite as much telling as maybe it did a few years ago. But we're always trying to promote this vision of Sakai as being forward looking, energetic and continuously improving. And I think that's as important now as it ever has been. We're, we're looking at institutions that are, you know, after a, a decade or more on Sakai are trying to figure out what their future direction is. And it's it's important for for Sakai to be moving forward energetically and innovatively, uh, you know, but also projecting that, uh, you know, that that vision of ourselves as well so that institutions can, you know, not only know that that's happening, but also sense that it's happening too. So this roadmap is all about trying to figure out how Sakai will evolve to better meet the needs of faculty and students going forward. It represents this shared agreement among all of us in the Sakai community regarding the sequence in which enhancements will be implemented. And it allows us to chug away on these enhancements during the, the release cycle and not have to spend time trying to figure out what comes next or whether to include something. Those decisions are made up front for the, for the coming year and then we proceed. And that was, we definitely saw that this year. Um, the decisions were made, people knew what they were and 
we move, we move forward as quickly as we could to implement as many of those things as we could. All right. So from a process perspective, this is what the roadmap look, process looks like. And we're about to uh, engage in another one of these collaborative roadmap making efforts uh, this coming this fall and winter. So generally, so this is what it looked like last year and the year before that was fairly similar. So we can expect something kind of like this in the fall and winter to come. So in October-ish, uh, there are some conversations that are preliminary in nature. I tend to consult the roadmap steering team. A few of you that are here today are on that team. So there are some conversations internal to long site. There are conversations with the roadmap steering team and all of that produces a version one of the roadmap that is put forth at SakaiCon for initial discussion and comment and review. So there's some iteration uh, based upon those comments. There's usually a second version with, that I take to a bunch of the different working groups in the Sakai community. So this group and accessibility, UX, the core team, uh, you know, other groups if, if they're interested as well. So there's a lot of community input that's gathered in November and December. Then coming out of the holidays in January, there's a, a steering team review of uh, the, a roadmap steering team review of the comments that have come through, just trying to make sense of, you know, what people have said and what the priorities seem to be, where there are coalescing areas of, of energy in the community. Then there's yet another iteration of the roadmap, and that iteration tends to be brought to Sakai Camp or Sakai Days in January, February, whenever those tend to be. So uh, the the timing for that has varied from you know. But it's but it's always in the first quarter of the year, so so that's where at Sakai Days we have a final conversation about the roadmap, and that's where adoption takes place, and then implementation follows. So the the trick is to get ourselves all set up with the roadmap so that we have plenty of input. Uh, people feel like they've been consulted multiple times, so that the the conversation at Sakai Days is a closing conversation instead of. Uh, you know, an, an opening conversation or, you know, one where, you know, there are potentially major revisions to the roadmap that are brought forward. So that's what that process looks like. And you can expect something fairly similar this year. That's worked pretty well for us. So let's take a look at what the roadmap might might contain for 2022 to 2024. So um, I'll note that this is the feature version of the roadmap. So the roadmap this year was split into two different areas. There is a feature roadmap and a technical roadmap. So the link that you see on this slide, and I'll put that link in the chat as well. Um, maybe I'll put it in the chat. I will put it in the chat in, in a few minutes. Um, so this is this is the link to the roadmap page in Confluence that contains this feature roadmap plus the Google document that contains the entirety of the roadmap. So you're you know you're welcome to take a look. This is a relatively open book, uh, but this is the the image that we put together to represent the the feature roadmap. And uh, so you can see in 2022 our plan was to have a new learning discussions tool. Uh, new tables and forms design, a new course registration tool for continuing ed groups and what Martin Ramsey would call non-academic non educators, uh, groups that teach but don't have an SIS like institutions do. There's meant to be a new meetings tool, uh, improvements to lessons, improvements to the calendar design, uh, improved video assignments. Uh, so that was all planned for 2022 and there were a bunch of other things planned for 2023 and beyond. So I thought it'd be useful to circle back to you guys first and to other groups a little bit later on to give you a sense of what we think is actually going to get into Sakai 22. So of these items that we laid out for ourselves in the roadmap, how are we doing? So here's, here's that progress update. And we actually have done quite well. And there are several things that are coming from Western and Dayton that actually aren't on this list at all. And I can... I can dig out the uh, the Dayton email and give you guys an update on that if you'd like as well. Um, but from from my perspective, uh, you know, looking at roadmap items on the feature side, here's what's coming. So the conversations tool that Longsight and Duke worked on is uh, will be in Sakai 22. So it's taking the form in its initial iteration of a question and answer tool. So that's an expansion of functionality. Uh, eventually, conversations, uh, hopefully before Sakai 23, will add 
support for threaded discussions and grading. So the, the long-term plan is to have conversations uh, replace the existing forums tool that has lots of JIRAs attached to it for improvements and people have wanted to make improvements and conduct modernization. So over time, we're hoping that the conversation tool will serve that purpose and replace forums. So no, no rush on that, but over the next couple of years, that's the plan. So the new course registration tool did not in the end take place. So uh, Longside is still looking at an integration with an external service because this, this remains a need. There are organizations that continue to ask for this. Uh, you know, how can I enroll students in courses in Sakai if I don't have an SIS? Um, you know, and how do they pay me for them? How do they, you know, how do we get cost recovery if we're not a, if we're not a university with, with systems for that? So this need is still there, but it's not going to get into Sakai 22. So on the improved side, so there will be improvements to lessons that, uh, that Dayton is contributing. Thank you, Dayton. There's a lot that they've done this year and uh, more in the year past. So there will be a new UI for our, the calendar in Sakai. So the back end stays the same, but the, the new front end will be better and more modern and allow for us to make some additional front end workflow improvements so that the calendar in Sakai looks a whole lot more like the calendars that you expect in uh, Google and Outlook and other places. So it's meant to be much more of a modern calendar than it is today. And so we've we've gotten that uh, that initial switch over to the new full calendar UI completed. So there will very shortly be some improvements to the meetings tool in Sakai. So the meetings tool is used by a, a small number of folks to provide a native integration to the big blue button uh, web conferencing tool. So meetings has existed for a long time. It was initially contributed by Blindside Networks. Longside's been keeping it up recently. And uh, Wilma and I have gone through uh, with a, an external firm, a fairly extensive process of UI redesign. So, uh, so meetings will get some light improvements in Sakai 22. So the the meeting setup screen will be turned into a multi-step wizard, for example, and uh, the meetings tool itself will be uh, refactored as a bunch of web components with the long-term view of being able to drop uh, meeting pieces into other into other tools in Sakai. And uh, that will begin uh, with any luck with a meetings widget that will be available for the dashboard in Sakai 22 and beyond. So Adrian's doing that work uh, you know, in, the, in the next week or so, and we expect to have that in for Sakai 22. And looking ahead uh, for meetings, we, we expect to have a, a pretty extensive redesign of meetings. There's a whole lot more new UI that is not gonna make it into 22. Uh, we're looking ahead to a Microsoft Teams integration you know, thinking about how to expand Sakai's capabilities to leverage uh, Teams and eventually Zoom uh, so that all of those web conferencing tools can be controlled from one place. Uh, and you don't, you're don't you not subject to the different UIs that come with different kinds of integrations. Teams itself doesn't yet have an integration with Sakai. Uh, as I understand it, it doesn't have an LTI integration. Or if it has one, it's very, very new. So, so that's going to be an expansion of capabilities that will come in the future, not yet. Uh, there's also a new video assignment type so that uh, instructors can ask their students to uh, record video as, a, as an assignment. So that's, uh, that was on the roadmap uh, as, as an improvement to assignments, and that's going to be contributed. So there's also been a whole lot of discussion about uh, new tables and forms design. This should not be forms. This should be forms uh, because there are tables and forms all over Sakai, and they uh, they, they need a little bit of love to make them have a much more modern design and a much more modern appearance than they have currently. So uh, Michael Green of Duke and uh, um, and Sean Foster of Western University have been working really hard on a on a new UI design and it's expanded to include uh, a new tabless UI for Sakai. So there's a whole lot of work that is going into that. And there are a few small portions of that that will make it into Sakai 22. So I it's uh, I, I don't know at the moment which aspects of their UI designs will actually make it in, but there we've been talking about this and there are a few. So let me um, let me pause there and just open the floor for reactions, comments and questions. Um, 
looks good. Um, I guess my only question or comment would was that I was hoping to see some more um, improvements to dashboard in in including some more um, things that could be alerted about like tests and quiz due dates and, and things like that. Not sure if there was any thought to that or or if that's still potentially possible or that's, I, I know that we had talked about expanding the, the set of available widgets for dashboard. Um, I don't think there are any that are currently being developed, but on the other hand, those might be the kinds of things that could be put out in, in maintenance releases because they're, they're pretty mm. small. I mean, um, I'm not even thinking of a new widget as opposed to just expanding the, I guess they were calling it the assignments widget. Um, thinking of the, 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 the task list widget? Yeah, yeah the, the task list that only really includes assignment due dates. Um, mm -hmm. and, and there's so much more things that are that I would consider to be tasks within ReggieNet that, that weren't included in that. That I mean, that's part of the reason why we decided not to implement the dashboard, because we didn't see it as, as really adding that much value um, without having a little bit more information in that task list. And, and and it being kind of almost um, having a negative value in that the students would look at the task list and say, well, well, I did that, so I'm done. Um, whereas there are other things that, that need to be done and, and aren't being highlighted there, so. Right, so if, it, so if it's not comprehensive, they, they think they're done when they're not. Exactly. Yeah. And that, that was a big concern of ours and, and the kind of the main reason we decided not to even implement dashboard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm definitely, let me, let me take a note on that because uh, I'll talk to Adrian. I mean, there, there may be opportunities to make some small improvements like that. Um, you know, I, I, I shouldn't entirely speak out of turn and say that for sure that stuff can be released in a, in a maintenance release, but widgets are, are, are pretty small. So I, you know, my, my guess is that we might be able to see our way clear to doing that. Right. Yeah, um, I think like there's, I said, there's it's, it's not even a new widget. It's just expanding the existing widget. Right. right. There's a few JIRAs that I put in about the task list um, to add support for additional tools. So there should be some JIRAs already floating around mm -hmm. about that. But if there are any things that I missed, feel free to create additional JIRAs and, and tag them um, for the task list. Some of this. Was Charles is, is is on me because we we prioritized conversations and meetings uh, over uh, the the task list widget, you know, or or other widgets and dashboards. So that was a it was it it, it was absolutely a, a decision that was, you know, it it was it was a community decision, you know, to you know be to prioritize those those areas in the roadmap, uh, you know. But on the other hand, I think that there were. Uh, Anyway, so I'll I'll, I'll just well, say that you know it was a, this was a, a decision that was clearly made, but I think that it also you know I think there was hope that more could have been accomplished. So I I, I definitely hear you on that. Let's see. And Dave, you were going to say something. Yeah. So um, one of the reasons, uh, one of the things that w we weren't necessarily super keyed in on this, but um, I didn't know if there was any comment made about making the dashboard function better when it's displayed on a mobile device. Um, so in some kind in some some of our courses in the past, we've actually made use of the lessons tool as the replacement to the overview because we can put some of the widget stuff in there. And uh, and so that displays really good on a mobile device. Um, it comes up, it does a great job of you know moving things around and showing things the way it needs to. But the dashboard doesn't do that so much. Um, and so that was kind of a detractor from us aside from the task list um, we weren't nearly as worried about the task list um, as much because we use the lessons checklist so much but i didn't know if that was mentioned um, uh, or not but um, i'm not nearly so worried I, it almost seems like whenever we come up with uh, with a new tool that comes out it's almost like it sort of requires an iterative process that requires almost a a, a point real not a, just point just a point release but uh, you know whole uh, you know, Sakai 20 and then 21, and then the, the, the tool really comes in, into maturity uh, after about a year's time. Mm -hmm. 
for sure. So I've I've got a couple of notes here. So and and Wilma's got the uh, the roll up Jira for uh, for for dashboard. I, is there is that's there a for Jira tasks. For... That's, that's for tasks widget in the dashboard. Does it include a task for uh, more mobile friendliness? No, this one was specifically about adding other types of events to the task widget. So adding things. Wilma, should I create a Jira? I don't, I don't Yeah, I, I don't think there's one about mobile. So yes, I would go ahead and create one. I can do that. Wilma, do you, do you remember when the when Bridget did the UI work, were there mobile designs that were created for dashboard? I thought we had some mobile screens. I can't remember if they were of the dashboard or if she had like the course home, but I I would kind of want to say yes, but I'd have to go back and look. Maybe it's something I just haven't seen yet um, in our own or in our own instance or something. Um, mm, I can I, check I, nightly. I, I I bet it's it's I, I would think it's more likely that we we ran out of time for that piece of development, but you know. It's it, so anyway. I've I've taken a note, and we'll, we'll, we should definitely look into that because we we talk a lot about Sakai's responsive design and its mobile friendliness and the ability to, you know, to make use of it on on mobile devices and tablets. And we need to be walking the talk. Other thoughts, comments, reactions. Does it seem like it's a lot more work than what it was last year at this time in terms of the outlay and, and the uh, the goal setting? Um, well, I mean, the the goal setting work hasn't really begun this year, and it hadn't really begun at this point last year. So right. it really is, uh, you know, it's, it's a post-semester start kind of thing. So in the first half of October is when it tends to begin. So I, I, I can't really say that it's it's more or less work. I mean, I do think that, you know, more development was contributed this year. You know, so it, in terms of, uh, you know, actual development hours, more more time was spent. But that, that may not have been the question that you were asking, Dave. No, I think we're good. So I should probably share one other thing, um, which is the the list of items that have been contributed from Dayton, which is kind of cool. Um, let me uh, let me share this real quickly. So I'm I'm sharing the inside of an email that uh, that Dave Bauer sent to. It's actually sent to Sakai user on August 20th. So, so everyone can track this down. Um, but I think this, this will be, this will be good to, to show and just to mention. And then we can, we can wrap up this piece of the discussion. So you can, you can find this yourself in the, in the Sakai users, Google group dated August 20th, an email from David Bauer, but, uh, here's what's, here's what Dayton is contributing for Sakai 22. So uh, the first two items are improvements to the commons tool. Uh, the third one is an improvement to rubrics that uh, that makes sharing rubrics more clear, as is the, the fourth one also, is, which is about uh, aggregate rubrics. And the fifth improvement that they're contributing is uh, new page layouts in lessons. So it's, uh, you know, these, these layouts will install a, a a full page of template content so that instructors can get started. So they're providing three layouts and there can be there can be more created. So they've done they've done a lot of work. You know, the the uh, the, the line item in the update slide I showed previously was lessons improvements, but they've done a whole lot more than just that. So kudos to to Dayton. I don't have the full list of improvements from from Western. So one of the things we need to do is to pull all those pieces together so that we can start telling the story from a from a, a, a marketing perspective within the community promoting the work that's been done and uh, a marketing perspective 
outside the community talking to potential adopters or to institutions that are considering whether or not to adopt a different LMS going forward. There may also be some improvements in LTI, but we're not sure exactly how many of them are going to get into 22. Um, but we've been working with Dr. Chuck on some improvements to the assignment LTI and also um, on the workflow for adding a new external tool. So hopefully at least some of that will get into the 22 release. So that's what I've got. So we can continue this conversation in a more informal way, Wilma, or we can switch to JIRAs, whatever you and Charles would prefer. Does anybody have any additional thoughts, questions, reactions for the roadmap? I'm just really excited about the aggregate rubrics that Dayton's uh, put in um, because I remember it being asked by our assessment team, hey, this is great. You've got rubrics in Sakai. Can we get this across, you know, multiple sort of things? And so I'm excited to see how that data will be able to use, be, be used with our assessment folks. So that's just, that's great. I will paste the link to the roadmap page in Confluence into the chat. Um, you're gonna have, you'll, you'll have to do some pasting yourself because it looks like the link is broken. Let me see. If, I'll, I'll see if I can do better than that while we're moving on to the next conversation. And you guys can look forward to uh, the start of this year's roadmap conversations in, I don't know, six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. So thanks for uh, thanks for taking some time on this this morning. Thanks, Josh, for updating us on the roadmap work, and um, it'll it'll be pretty exciting when we start to see some of these things um, appear, <laughs> and you can actually see how it works in the in the actual software. So exciting, um, and and more to come. A lot of these projects are just sort of the beginning of a larger change like with the meeting stuff and um, things like that is the conversation. So it's kind of the tip of the iceberg, but there's a lot more um, new stuff to come shortly thereafter. So we can look forward to lots of improvements across several tools. Hey, Wilma, can I ask a quick question that kind of follows up on something? Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember that it was mentioned about the gradebook service or the grade grading service. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming that's still further down the roadmap. Not that I'm anxious about it. I just remember there was quite a substantial amount of yeah. talk. And of course, that that's a that's a huge piece. Except that that's a huge piece that has its fingers in a lot of things. So it may take uh, quite a little bit of time to matriculate. Yeah, that was one that um, it's still on the roadmap. We are still working on it, but it is kind of um, a big item, especially because it deals with grades. So we want to make sure that we test it thoroughly and everything. So it's been delayed a little bit. Um, but it is still in the works. You know, and I, th I think it's worth noting, I mean, this it is absolutely on Earl's list. The grading service was uh, was top of the list on the, the application side of the technical roadmap. Um, here, let's let's take a very quick peek at that since you've since you brought it up. So we didn't get as much done on that side as we might have wanted to. So here's the here's the Google Doc. This is linked from the Confluence page, and I can put the the link in the chat as well. So the feature roadmaps that we talked about before, the technical roadmap, we didn't really talk about all that much in this context. Um, so this was a, a set of items to be approached in priority order. So there really wasn't a lot done on the application side for 22. On the infrastructure side, um, Java 11 and Elasticsearch 8 support will be in, in Sakai 22. Caching improvements will be in there. There are a bunch of JSF tools that have been upgraded to JSF2 by EDF. Um, and I don't remember whether the MySQL 8 support made it in. Um, the other thing that's, that's going to make it in that we haven't really talked about much yet is something that is on the ongoing investment side of the feature roadmap. So uh, there will be a, a workflow improvements to tests and quizzes. So this is this is put together by uh, the UX team with Tiffany Stahl and John Buckingham leading the charge. 
So that's that's going to be in, in Sakai 22 as well. And Earl is working on better support for IMS standards across Sakai. So that'll mean better support for common cartridge, better support for QTI2. So that's uh, that, that's that's coming as well in Sakai 22. With that, I'm really done. <laughs> it's time for Jira's. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and you now there's just one from Tiffany on here first, but I'm going to skip that one. We'll go to Christina's too, because um, those have been hanging out for a little bit. Um, so we'll do paste the Jira into the that here. Do this one first, and let me put the screen share so to look at in the recording. Um, this one I think we've talked about before at TNL, but it got um, kind of kicked back again for more information. Okay. There's quite a bit to this one. Yeah, yeah, this is the gray book item overview. Um, so the desire was to have a page where people could kind of see um, the current gray book setup, like where you would see all of the different items and how many points they're worth and any categories or settings that, that were appropriate to each item. Um, so that you could see it kind of all at a glance. Right now, um, it's hard to get that kind of aggregate info. You can look at the details for each column and you can kind of see which categories they're in and things like that. But um, it's a little bit harder to get kind of that big picture view. Um, so there were a few different options proposed. And you'll see there's a bunch of attachments here. Um, here. Okay, I think this was actually, this might have been a rough mock-up of how it could maybe be represented if there was a, a new tab added in the gray book that just kind of listed everything out and gave you kind of a list, a little reminiscent of the gray book classic um, view that you started with, for those of you who remember that. I know there are some times when I'll just go through and select a student and just mm -hmm. pull up a student so I can see that kind of information, but it's obviously not yeah. comprehensive. But it's like I, I, I get the feel for wanting to see. I just want to see all the stuff. I, I don't care about the student. I just need to see the listing in that sort of respect. And so I can understand that. Yeah. The student view is is similar because it, it shows it kind of in this you know format with the items down the, this line. And then you see um, information individual to the student, but it would be nice to have a summary view of the class. So here, and this is a view of the current grade book and you have to, okay, this is another thought for where to put it. If, if maybe uh, it wasn't on its own tab, but that it was maybe some sort of course breakdown link, and then you would see um, the total information there. Uh, this was yet another idea. <laughs> you can see there are a lot of ideas floated to have sort of a grade a view grade book items button up in the top and that people could go there and see something that looks a little bit like that item summary page, which we do have now, but that and maybe that page would show more information on it. Um, so you I assume see... this would also just end up being a view option, not necessarily a sorting function. Because that's just yeah. a part of the mock up, right? I think this is just part of the mock up. These were yeah. taken from screens that exist. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it'd be great if you could edit in line, but um, but that would be harder to do, obviously. Um, 
that I think that's the end of our screenshots. But, um, but you get the idea. So there's been quite a lot of discussion about this. Um, there were like 16 older comments and a lot of discussion back and forth. And um, I'm just curious if you guys have any thoughts on what's the best way um, to do this. Let's see, it looks like the last couple. that course breakdown. But, uh, okay, that was something that Dayton had, but they're cautioning against it. Um, clearly, they haven't read this through carefully. All right. So anyway, so do you guys have thoughts on how you would like it to to appear? Because there were a lot of different variations of this um, concept. So if if you Does could in, in an, an ideal world, <laughs> go ahead. Does Dayton's already seem like they have implemented part of this in their own it context? Sounded, yeah, it sounded to me like Dayton had that um, course breakdown, this one here. It had something like this. And um, and then maybe they, they had a screen that looks like that. So I, they said that they'd be happy to discuss more. Um, so we could maybe talk to them a little more, get a little more information on what exactly shows up in there. Because right now I'm just seeing points, but I don't know if that's because this gray book only has points or um, you know, you're not seeing additional information like categories. Well, actually, no, you do see category. Um, or uh, weighting. It could be that this is not a weighted category. Um, you don't see anything about rubrics, that kind of stuff. So I don't know exactly how much information is in their version of this, um, but we could certainly investigate to find out if people think that that's a good way to approach it. Um, versus a tab, versus a button. Um, and I think some people had initially said that maybe that bulk um, edit option in the green book would be another place where this could show up. Um, so the bulk edit, again, introduces some issues with editing. So. Right. Um, would it be helpful to have Christina's feedback on it because she initiated the request? Um, or do other people have other strong opinions about this? That's the thing too. Like, yeah. Well, Christina unfortunately isn't here today. Right. She did comment on the Jira, I believe. Yeah, the last comment was hers, and from February. Um, and she had suggested um, something in the edit item details window. So, I mean, we could ask her for more info. Um, this was something that she wanted actually to get um, Longsight to estimate. And, and we told her that we needed more information before we estimated it because we're not quite sure what the best way of handling this is. Right. So we need a little more clarity around what people would want. Um, so, mm -hmm. yes, we will certainly go back to Christina, but I'm, I'm interested if, if any of the folks on today's call have thoughts um, on how they would like it to show up. Like I said, I only have done the same thing where I've I've just gone through and selected a student to see that sort of data, although all of that is not there explicitly in the same way. Um, but I'm also reading in the comments how, of course, you know, faculty hate having to click multiple times to get into things. And so saving them time to get into things is helpful. Um, there's something to be said about adding functionality without increasing the complexity. And that's really hard to do, especially when you're working not just with functionality, but also the user interface and where 
where the tendency would be for faculty to go to find that thing. Um, uh, I still make video content today that uh, of feature sets that came, feature functions that came out to it two iterations ago, and my faculty are like, "Oh, that's brand new to me," and I'm like, "Oh, it is." <laughs> okay. Yeah, you just didn't find it yet. <laughs> yes, because we've been hiding it for two years. Charles, any thoughts, Jennifer? Well, that's certainly something we've been looking for. Um, I'm not sure. If it's if it's something <clears throat> that could be done in phases where you you know you at least create a display of the summary and then work on editing functions later um, I'm not sure I think I'd rather see it as a a button or a tab rather than a drop down item but I think it would be easier to discover the functionality if, if it were presented as a button or a tab. You might not click to find out what things they can do, but if they see it. Then... Yeah, that's, that's a good point because the UX would actually surface it quite a bit differently mm -hmm. um, as opposed to the way uh, Dayton has surfaced it. Although they may also have their faculty well trained to use that context sensitive menu functionality, because other things yes. have gotten built into that grade book functionality over the past year and a half. All right, so I pulled up Gradebook just for us to take a look. Um, this is on Nightly, um, and uh, I think what people had had suggested at one point was either under item order or potentially bulk edit, maybe that that information could be displayed in one of those places, mm -hmm. which would, would not add additional things to the interface, but would kind of leverage a, a, an item. I, I could probably be okay with it under item order. Um, although it is also, this, this gets at the, 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 the user interface, you know, it takes me back to uh, tool order and why we use that to hide things inside info, you know, under bulk edit, you could bulk edit, but you're not really editing anything. You're just wanting to see something. So do we have to change the bulk edit or we just tell people, yeah, you just go to bulk edit to see this overview items thing, or you hit item order, which kind of makes a little bit more sense, but then you're viewing something, but item order is the idea of resequencing something. And yeah. Good. But well, I mean, if you put it on one of those, you'd probably have to relabel it. Right. Yeah. But bulk edit um, works works for its function out. Like it does exactly what it says you are allowed to do, mm -hmm. and so does the item order function. Yeah. yeah. Which okay, well, we could rename it, but it and to me, I think we get stuck in a pickle like I we mean, were with tool order inside info. I mean, there, there's also the kind of the view columns option as well. I mean, if you know, if that's something that could be. Incorporated there as well as mm. um, seems to me. In some ways, it almost makes more sense there because you're viewing the columns, but um, now you're getting more information about those columns and how they go together. I don't know. It's a thought. Yeah, that's a good thought. That's a good thought. Yeah. Well, particularly particularly if it's not something you can edit. If it's only right. information you can view. Mm -hmm. Then showing it here but still might be fine. Being, being able to toggle whether things are hidden or not. Yeah. Yeah, where Dayton had it was, let's see, they had a course breakdown. So when they went to this menu, they had another one. Yeah, I, I don't like it there. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it there either. I think it's not. It's, I wouldn't think to go there to look for it. Um, 
I think they're thinking it might have been that because it was near view course stats that people. Yeah, could there. I mean, it's not terrible, right. but it's not the first place that I would think of to go. Right. Um. Which is why I can understand people suggesting another button or tab. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think it'd be a good idea to get some feedback from Christina and then whatever rationale Dayton used to put it where they were might inform why we would put it somewhere else. Um, yeah. And I'm also thinking we might want to do kind of maybe a survey or, or some sort of lightweight testing and just kind of show a few different options for how you would find it where you would put it and just yeah. kind of get people to pick their favorites right because there were several in that jira and i can think of a few more mm. i mean i'm kind of thinking well you know here we're sort of in the spreadsheet view i mean could there be a toggle where you go to item view instead of spreadsheet view and then you just view items i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know how that would look but i mean there there might be other ways to to surface that so i don't know but um but we definitely need more information i think before we can do any kind of estimate for her unfortunately right um, and she's had that she's had this year in since what 2019 the year is pretty old. Oh, um, 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it, but it has been discussed up until, you know, February. And that was kind of when the discussion stopped, but I don't think we ever got to a resolution. Right. So, um, so yeah, we should definitely resurface that and see if there's a way to find a better way to display that information. <clears throat> All right. Um, any other thoughts on this one? Mm -mm. Anybody else on the call? Nope. So um, the next one. Do we have time for another one? Actually, it's not one that um, it's one that actually has been contributed. Let me, I don't want to just show you guys because I went to look at it. It's it's the second one that, um, Jira, second Jira that uh, Christina had mentioned. I get my link to the agenda back. Um, because when I went there to look at it, I noticed that um, it was EDF or somebody. Oh, no, this was also um, you, Dayton. Um, just to point out to you guys, this this one was about um, the aggregate rubrics. So if you haven't seen it, um, you, Dayton has already contributed this, and there's some videos here about their aggregate rubrics. So um, we don't really need to talk about it because it's already there. <laughs> but um, I encourage you to go on and watch those if you haven't yet. And uh, that's awesome that you, Dayton, has been so great about contributing that sort of thing. Was that 41005? Yes, that was okay. 41005. I was pleasantly surprised when I went there to check on it, and I'm like, oh, somebody already did this one. <laughs> so it's great, yeah. isn't it? It's a good feeling. Yep. All right, so we are about out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing here. And, um, and I do thank you guys for attending and for. Um, you know, talking about uh, a little bit of Jira, a little bit of roadmap. Um, so always good to, to have you guys on the call to chat. And um, hopefully you will join us in two weeks for our next call. Um, I don't think we have an agenda yet. Um, so it'll be Jira's unless something else comes up. But um, if, if we get a speaker between now and then, I'll be sure and, and post that information out on the list. So you know what to um, plan for for next time. Thanks so much. All right. Um, Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks.